everyone, welcome back to the Movie Couple channel. I'm Wendy and here is my non-spoiler review for Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. The Secrets of Dumbledore is directed by David Yates and stars Jude Law, Eddie Redmayne, Matt Mickelson, Dan Fogler, and Ezra Miller. As Grindelwald moves to seize control of the wizarding world, Albus Dumbledore gathers a team of wizards and witches to stop him. This movie is the third installment in the Fantastic Beasts franchise, and you probably have already seen our trailer reaction to this movie, but if you haven't, you can go ahead and check it out right over here. So you guys know that I really love Harry Potter. I love the wizarding world. So when the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the very first one came out, I was quite excited for it. I still feel that I haven't, I don't quite connect with, even though it's set essentially in the world of the wizarding world, I don't quite connect to it. Uh, so much so that I really didn't even get to see the crimes of Grindelwald in theaters because I just wasn't invested in the world and in the story, which is kind of funny if you think about it because I was really into the Harry Potter books and movies and that whole world. So I was pretty cautiously optimistic going into this film even though I really enjoy the trailers. And I have to say I enjoyed this movie a lot more than I expected. Things are really ramping up from the previous film and this time around we do have Mads Mikkelsen playing the role of Grindelwald and to be honest I personally really enjoyed his take and his performance as Grindelwald more than Johnny Depp's. I just felt that it was a little bit more grounded and fit into the world of this movie a lot more than I found in um, Fantastic Beasts as well as Crimes of Grindelwald. I think what I really enjoyed about this movie is that Dumbledore needs to build a team around him in order to stop Grindelwald. So we're introduced to a couple of new characters, obviously older characters, previous characters from previous films do show up again in this one. And I really do enjoy the wizard battles and the movie is called The Secrets of Dumbledore. And boy, does he have a lot of secrets in this movie. For spoiler reasons, I am not gonna go into those so you as the audience can find out for yourself as you experience the film. So yes, I really do enjoy Albus Dumbledore putting his team together, his conversations with, uh, with Newt Scamander and sort of, you know, as Albus Dumbledore as we know him is he tells you just enough but you're never really 100% in on his plan. And that's what I kind of liked about this movie is you kind of watching everything unravel and you experience this as these characters experience them in the movie. So it's pretty refreshing considering how much I really didn't like Crimes of Grindelwald because I rewatched that before going into this film and it feels like it's a completely different movie in a completely different world. With that said, while I love the tone of the film, I again love the wizard battles, the wand battles if you will, I kind of found Newt Scamander has become a very much a secondary character. You can almost call this franchise Albus Dumbledore the early years because that's I feel like what it's turning into and perhaps this is how we should have set this franchise from the beginning because I personally would have been a lot more invested and interested in that rather than introducing us via Newt Scamander who by the way is a great character but we were starting to move away and especially in this movie more and more from the Fantastic Beasts obviously the first film it is called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them we have a lot of encounters with these magical creatures which I love and they're still very much present in this movie but the role of uh, Newt is a bit more reduced in this one and his encounters uh, and with these magical creatures are also reduced in this film. And I get it, we, we're moving on a little bit from that because there's bigger things at stake as far as Grindelwald and what he's trying to do. And as it stands, my favorite character from the get-go, from the very first film in this franchise, was Dan Fogler's character, Jacob. And Jacob continues to be my favorite character in this film. He's just so much fun to watch. So the film is at two hours and 23 minutes and I definitely felt that long runtime at times. There's also a couple of plot points that I it's interesting how they brought those in and then they don't really there's no consequences for certain characters uh, you know we do get to see Queenie again in this movie and it's just really interesting how they where they take her story and how that sort of ends and again this is non-spoiler so I can't really uh, explain fully but if you've seen the movie if you see the movie and you get to the end of it, you will understand what I'm trying to say here. Also, Tina is really absent 
in this film a lot more than I expected. And that's a bummer because she played such a big role in the previous films. And yes, they do sort of explain why she's not really there, but it it's it felt a little shoehorned in. Overall though, I was still really entertained. I wanted more wand battles. I wanted more, you know, witches and wizards versus witches and wizards. And I totally got that in this film. I feel like the stake is the highest in this film, in this third installment. This is actually my favorite movie out of the Fantastic Beasts franchise and my rating for this film is check it out. Have you seen The Secrets of Dumbledore? And if you have, comment in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on this movie. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next review.